Namo Buddha, this is Abhinav Gulecha and in this video uh, what I am trying to do is that I am uh, taking a Zen, taking up a Zen story uh, it's, a, it's a Zen koan and uh, uh, in Zen tradition what they do is that they have these stories through which uh, they ex you know want the students to get their own insights through these stories so I have my own insights through the story uh, but I will share my insight and I would also want you to share your insight as to what you learned from this story. So the story that I am taking is from the book 101 Zen Stories by Nyogen Zensaki and this book is available on Amazon. I will give the link to this book also in the description. Uh, the story is uh, finding a diamond on a muddy road. right? So I will read the story. So I hope you enjoy the story. right? So Gudo was the emperor's teacher of his time. Nevertheless, he used to travel alone as a wandering mendicant. Once, when he was on his way to Edo, Edo is the place, the cultural and political center of Shogunate, he approached a little village named Tekinaka. It was evening and a heavy rain was falling. Gudo was thoroughly wet. Gudo was the emperor's teacher. So he was thoroughly wet. His straw sandals were in pieces. At a farmhouse near the village, he noticed four or five pairs of sandals in the window and decided to buy some dry ones. The woman who offered him the sandals, seeing how wet he was, invited him to remain in the night at her home. Gudo accepted, thanking her. He entered and recited a sutra before the family shrine. He then was introduced to the woman's mother and to her children. Observing that the entire family was depressed, Gudo asked what was wrong. So that lady said, my husband is a gambler and a drunkard, the housewife told her, told him. When he happens to win, he drinks and becomes abusive. When he loses, he borrows money from others. Sometimes when he becomes thoroughly drunk, he does not come home at all. What can I do? So Gudo said, I will help him. Here is some money. Get me a gallon of fine wine and something to eat. Then you may retire. I will meditate before the shrine. Now, when the man of the house, the housewife's husband, returned about midnight, quite drunk, he bellowed, Hey wife, I am home. Have you something for me to eat? Then Gudo was there. The housewife had already retired, slept. So Gudo said, I have something for you. I happened to get caught in the rain and your wife kindly asked me to remain here for the night. In return, I have bought some wine and fish, so you might as well have them. So the man was delighted. He drank the wine at once and laid himself down on the floor. Gudo sat in his meditation beside him. In the morning when the husband awoke, he had forgotten about the previous night. Who are you? Where do you come from? He asked Gudo, who was still meditating. I am Gudo of Kyoto and I am going on to Edo, replied the Zen master. Now, then this man realized that he is the my emperor's teacher. The man was utterly ashamed. He apologized profusely to the teachings of the emperor, to the teacher of the emperor. Gudo smiled. Everything in this life is impermanent. He explained. Life is very brief. If you keep on gambling and drinking, you will have no time left to accomplish anything else. And you will cause your family to suffer too. The perception of the husband awoke as if from the dream. You are right, he declared. How can I ever repay you for this wonderful teaching? Let me see you off and carry your things a little way. So he said, okay, let me see you off and I'll walk with you for some time. And you know, as a like a repayment of my gratitude to you. So Guru said, if you wish, okay, you can come. So the two started out. After they had gone three miles, Gudo told him to return. Gudo said, now you go back, you know, I will go. So the, the, the husband, the person said, no, just five, minutes, five miles more, I will, uh, he begged Gudo. So, so Gudo said, okay. So then they, when they walked further, that Gudo said, now, at least now you go. So the man replied, no, no, after 10 more miles. So then they walked further, further and then at one point Gudo said, now you return. They had come a long way. 
when the time 10 miles were over uh, gudo said now you return so that man said i am going to follow you for the rest of my life declared the man next in the story it is modern zen teachers in japan spring from the lineage of the famous master who was the successor of gudo his name was munan the man who never turned back so if you get this story see basically the man who was following 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 gudo who wanted to repay his debt became a zen master became a such a big zen master and he whoever are the modern zen teachers in japan they are the students of that guy his name was munan and who became a student of gudo so now so this is the story now we can all draw our own insights from this i have my own insight the first insight that i get is i reflect from my life uh, in the buddha's teachings is that you know after i came in the teachings and i i saw this time you know my life was turned upside down and this teaching of buddha that i am showing you the way from out from suffering and this is like uh, i am like you know what what happened to that man munan when he when the gudo said to him that everything is impermanent for me the buddha's thing is that when he buddha says life is suffering there you know you, i will say that uh, buddha you sold it to me right and i will only follow your path right so that's where i follow buddha's path so important thing is that sometimes we become so indebted to the teacher for the knowledge and then we decide that we have to just follow and this is what the munan did he just follow his path right and then he he did not return back he just followed him followed him followed him that is like one so coming in the teaching and never turning back so we have we've all come to buddha's teaching till now and coming in the teaching knowing about the path see buddha did not you know he did not possess all the knowledge himself he did all the meditations all the penance and then he found the noble eightfold path and that is sole book bhikkhus this is what i am telling you the red direct way to liberation just follow this noble eightfold path so now we are so lucky that we have the teaching of buddha right now in front of us we don't have to run here and there maybe buddha would have spent so much time figuring out things but buddha has given us the shortcut so why not when we have come this this to this level in the teaching just follow the teaching never turn back so attend all the household duties and all the family duties but never turn back from the teaching that is one thing that i learn second what i learn is i just made notes yes never make a perception about yourself or any other person you know that they will not be able to you know learn anything or be enlightened so in this in this what we clearly saw was this person was a gambler this person was a drunkard this person was a worthless useless fellow and when he came in touch with gudo who was his empress teacher and gudo just said everything is impermanent if you spend time in this then you will not have any time for anything else and that is where you know that was the satori moment for this man and he just realized what waste i was doing about my uh, my life you know so the thing is that even if we are you know in a difficult position in our life and we feel that we are nothing we are like a sinner do not think like that or do not think about anyone else also even a criminal has the seeds of buddhahood in him it only needs that right spark that right you know company of a saintly one or that some teaching the in the history of our evolution we have seen so many people turn from criminals to saints because the sainthood the seeds of sainthood of buddhahood is there in us so that is one one third second learning that i had third learning what i had is like what what the zen master said that life is very brief if you keep on gambling and drinking you will have no time left to accomplish anything else and you will cause your family to suffer too so important is to realize that we are fast approaching death so important is to realize that we need to go deep into the teachings of the buddha right practice the teachings adjust our daily routine so that we find more time to practice our meditation more time to be mindful and you know 
do all the things what buddha has said right so adjust our routine stop run chasing things which are just impermanent and be in this knowledge right so these were the some some few learnings that i had i hope this video was uh, useful this story was useful to you please do share your insights uh, what this story brings to you uh, this is the zen way of you know teaching where they have these stories and the students develop their own insights from these stories so do share your uh, reflections on this story in the comment section i will be very happy to you know read those uh, thank you so much and let me know if you find this interesting so i'll make more videos on the zen stories and uh, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya